Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to implement a tab feature on your website. What we're looking to achieve is something like what we have on the screen here, which is where you have a number of titles at the top of your screen and then some content in a box beneath those titles. And when you click on a different title to the one selected, you get some new content appearing in the box beneath. So the first thing I need to do is have a HTML file, CSS and JavaScript file, and I want to link between each of those. So if I want to attach the styles, I'll need a link element like this and use it to point to the style sheet. So I'll need rel of style sheet attribute in that link element and an href of tabs.css um, to point to the CSS file. Um, the file tabs.css is in the same folder as my HTML file, so all I need to do is type the name of the file um, because that's that's the relative path. The next thing I'll need to do is attach the script, the JavaScript. So I'll need a script tag at the bottom. Um, I won't need any of this. I won't need this type here, but what I, what I will need to do is provide a path to that file, which again is just tabs.js because um, all my files are saved in the same folder. Now to attach Java, um, jQuery, for those of you that don't know, the, the easiest thing to do is probably just to go to Google Hosted Libraries, um, which is this page here, click on jQuery, and then just copy this snippet of code here and then just stick that directly into your HTML file. So that's what I'm going to do. You can of course just download jQuery from the official site, um, and save that locally and point to it, but I think this is probably the easiest way of doing it um, and definitely the easiest way to demonstrate it. So the first thing we'll want is a div that is just going to contain every, uh, contain the entire feature. And I'm going to, so I'm going to create that, give it a class of tabs um, so that we know this is the tab feature and close that off. And the next thing I want to do is to mark up the titles. Now the titles are going to simply be an unordered list and list items within, within that unordered list. So let's, let's write our unordered list and a list item per title. We'll need a anchor inside each of these and we'll give the anchors an href that is unique to, to the, the title. Um, and the reason we want a unique href is so that later on in our JavaScript we can distinguish between the different titles that we've clicked on. So there we are, that's a list item that's going to represent the title. And we want three of those, so I'm just going to copy that three times and type in some names. So tennis, the first one, squash, the second one, and hockey in the third. And now as I said we need, it's important to have a different href for each title to distinguish between each title. So there we are. Now the next thing we'll need is a div um, to contain the content, um, so the text in this case, that corresponds to each title. So we'll need three of these. I'm just going to mark one up and then copy it three times. So if we have a div below give this a class of tab because this is an individual tab uh, content section and then we'll need another class which matches up to one of the, the classes of uh, sorry it matches up to the href of one of the titles so tab one for example and then we'll need three of those one per title and it's important to change this class here so that it matches up with one of the titles. There we go. And obviously we want some something inside our divs. Um, in this case, I'm just going to put some some text in a paragraph. Um, you can have anything inside your your tabs really, um, but I'm just going to have paragraphs for the purpose of demonstration because it's the easiest, probably the easiest thing to have in there. And so inside the, the paragraph tags there, we'll want some, some text. So I'm just going to copy over this um, Latin that I've got saved just as an example. But yeah, it can, it can be anything really in there. 
you can be as creative as you like with this. Oops. Copy over this final chunk of text. There we go. And that's all the markup we'll need. So let's see, I'll save that. Let's see what that looks like on the page now. There we go, it doesn't look like much right now, um, but it will do once we've started to apply some styles. Okay, so let's start with the styling. First thing I'm going to do is give um, the asset, the entire asset, a width of 50%. And the reason I want to do that is just so that it doesn't stretch across the entire page. Just make sure that it stretches um, across half the page. Um, and with this, with this talking you through the styling, I'm going to have um, the browser on the left hand side of the page, like this, and then the text editor on the right hand side of the page. Um, and this will allow me to show the changes that I make as I make them. So the first thing I'm going to do now is line up these titles alongside each other. At the moment they're rendering underneath each other, which isn't what we want. We want them next to each other. So let's float them left. And there you go, you can see they're starting to uh, line up alongside each other. But that's not what we want with, sorry, this isn't what we want with the text lining up next to it. So we're going to float that, float that left as well. So I'm going to select the text with tabs, div, and float that left as well. There we go. Um, and let's start styling the titles a little bit. So we want to get rid of the bullet points. And to do that, we'll need um, a selector for the unordered list itself. So let's do tabs, unordered list, and use a list style type of none. That'll get rid of the bullet points. And let's get rid of the underlining as well. So to do that, we'll need to target the anchor because the underlining is a default styling for the anchor. And that'll need a text decoration of none. There we go. Okay, and you can see that these titles are rendering slightly away from the side of the screen. And that's because there's some default styling on uh, the unordered list itself. And we want to get rid of that. So let's do uh, padding left of zero. And that's going to move it over. But we obviously want to space it out as well. So I'm going to put a, a padding on the, the list items. So here, let's apply padding 10 pixels sorry, five pixels, 10 pixels. And I've used the shorthand um, for padding here. And if you give it two values padding, the first value will be the padding for the top and the bottom of the element that you're applying that padding to. And the second value will be the, the padding for the left and the right. So there you can see they're nicely spaced out. Um, but let's, let's move the content away from the side of the screen as well. So let's give that a padding. Um, let's give it zero top and bottom and then 10 left and right. There we go. So that's starting to look a bit better. Um, but let's let's also apply a border on everything because if you look at the final example, we've got some borders. Let's put a border on our divs. So if I do border one pixel solid uh, hash CCC, that'll put a border on divs. And border here takes three parameters. So the first parameter is the size of the border. The second parameter is the style. So we're just gonna have the solid line. And the third one is the color. So there we can see there's a border on that div, but we also want a border on our um, titles. So let's put that same border on the list items at the top. There we go. But you can see in certain areas, you've got a, a, double, a double sized border there, so it's doubly as big. And that's because we have the border that's applied to the div and to the unordered list combining to double the size. So we're going to remove some of the, the uh, some of the border and um, some of those borders that double up. So let's do border bottom zero on those list items. And that removes the border at the bottom there. And let's do border um, left of zero 
on those list, list items. Um, but you can see that we have the, the edge of our titles now without any border. So we're going to have border left of one pixel solid hash CCC on the unordered list. And at the moment there's there's no border appearing and that's because the unordered list doesn't actually have any content inside it because our list items are floating. So if we do an overflow hidden on our unordered list, that'll now clear that float and we can see that there's a style on the left of the, of the titles. Um, but there's also some gap that's appeared now here and that's because there's a default styling on the un on the unordered list so let's give that margin zero to get rid of that default styling and there we are we're starting to look good um, a few final things to do let's put the let's let's change the color of the the anchors to black so that blue's a little bit ugly which is a uh, default again and let's put it put these uh, as uppercase so text transform uppercase there we go and that's looking a bit better and the final thing we want to do for the styling is apply some stylings and um, the default setting of the tabs so let's by default have tennis selected and show the tennis content so I'm going to go back to my HTML and I'm going to give a selected class to the tennis list item so if I give it class equals selected like that and then I want to target that give it a background so if I do tabs select the whole thing then unordered list and list items but only the one with the selected sorry with the selected class and then do background as CCC There's a background on the tennis. And by default, we only want to show the text corresponding to tennis. So I'm going to hide all of the, uh, the container divs by default, but then show the one for tennis, like so. If I refresh, there we go, that's what we want by default. So the final thing to do now is apply the JavaScript. Now the first thing to, to do with our JavaScript is to create a selector for the element that we've clicked on, uh, or sorry, for the title elements, so that when we click on a different title element, um, our JavaScript will run a function. So let's select, let's select our, um, titles and we're going to use this, this selector to get those titles so that when I click on an anchor within an, a list item within an unordered list that is a direct descendant of my tabs feature then um, apply the on function and the on function is a jQuery function that takes two parameters, the first one being an event, which is a click. So this, this will run when I click. And the second one being a function to actually to do something. And now I'm going to write an anonymous function and fill that up with all the logic that I need. So I'm going to write a console log in here just to, just to show that this is working. Let's do console log test and refresh. And so what I'm hoping to see is that the test will be logged to the console each time I click a new title and that is happening. Great. So we've got our setup there. And now what I want to do is get rid of that console log. And with our JavaScript, we're going to navigate the DOM tree to, uh, to do all of our logic. So what I mean by that is if I open up the console and show you the elements, um, when I click on a, a title, I'm going to navigate back to my tabs that, that contains everything and then search within that tabs for um, 
the div containing the content that corresponds to the tab that I've clicked on, so to the title that I've clicked on. And the reason we're going to do it this way is because if I had a number of these tab features on my website, if I wasn't navigating the DOM tree like this and just selecting a class with, um, sorry, an element with this class, then there's a chance the, the two tab features could interfere with each other. By clicking on one, then I'll change the content in the other, which isn't what we want. So we're going to navigate the, the DOM tree carefully. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down all the um, elements that I'm going to need and select all of those straight away. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a variable called that, which is going to be the element that we've clicked on. And you can select the element you've clicked on just by doing this. The next thing I'm going to want is a variable called tabs, which is going to be the the element that contains all of the, the other elements, so the tab feature itself. And to, to do that, I'm going to have to go, uh, that's actually the third parent of the element that I've clicked on. So I'm going to write parent three times. And that will give me um, a variable that corresponds to the entire feature. And the next thing I'm going to do is get the value of the href of the, the attribute that I've, sorry, of the, the element that I've clicked on. And to do that, I'm going to use this selector here. Um, in fact, actually, let's go to full screen for the rest of this JavaScript. Um, so let me write out this selector and then talk you through it. Now what we've done here is we've selected the attribute or the value of the href attribute that we've clicked on and then um, we're going to trim it so that we only have the the value from the um, from after the hash so if we look at our HTML see we have a hash there this is the the select that we've written here is going to remove that hash and select everything after it which is exactly what we want and the final thing we're going to do is define a variable called items which is going to correspond to the title elements so unordered list list items within our element within our entire tab feature okay so we've got all the the element like we've got a reference to all the elements that we'll need so now let's start applying some logic so on the click the first thing you want to do is change the background of the element that we've clicked on. So say we click on a, a new tab, then we want to give that the dark background and remove the dark background from the tab that was previously showing. So we use our, our reference to the title element and we remove the class of selected from all of those, first of all. And then we find the one that we've clicked on and add the class to it selected so let's let me write out the selector to do that and then talk through it Right, so what this is doing is finding the item or the title that has an anchor of hash and then the target value that we clicked on. So that's the href of the target that we've clicked on. And then we go to its parent, so we get out of the, the list item, we go to the, sorry, we get out of the, the anchor, we go to the, the list item, and then we add the class selected to that. And then obviously the selected class comes with the style, which is back, a gray background, which is what we want. The next thing we need to do is hide the content um, that was previously showing and add the content for the new title that we've clicked on. So we're going to, to do this, which is show, first of all, we're going to show all the content. So target all the tabs, so target all the, the divs containing the text and show them all. But then we're going to hide 
content for the tab uh, that corresponds to the, the titles that we haven't clicked on. So let's do that now. I'll write out the selector and then talk through it. So what we've done with this selector here is we've found the the tabs that don't have um, the, the value of the href of the title that we've clicked on in their class and then we've hidden those. So if I save this, go back to my page, refresh, you can see this working very nicely. 